Over the past few years, Panasonic's tagline has been Hollywood to your home. And to drive home this message, the Japanese brand has brought in a Batmobile into their IFA show booth. Now, I'm not the Dark Knight, but Panasonic has unveiled the darkest LCD ever. Hello everyone, Vincent Thieu from HGTV Test here. I'm here at Panasonic's show booth at IFA 2019 and I'm standing beside what, in my opinion, is the most exciting display technology to be launched by any brand at this show so far. This is Panasonic's new 55-inch dual LCD monitor which has reference grade color accuracy which the company is known for. But what is interesting is that it will be using the same dual LCD technology that is found on many of the 31-inch post-production studio monitors such as the Sony HX310, such as the ASO CG3145 and also maybe some monitors from Flanders Scientific or FSI as well. Now Panasonic is actually the manufacturer behind all these dual LCD technology but Panasonic decided that enough is enough, you know, we need to get in on the act and here we have the 55-inch version and clearly one advantage over all the other 31-inch monitors on the market is the sheer size and I think there has been a demand among the Hollywood studios and also post-production community for larger sizes especially when it comes to actually looking at the colors and also the picture on screen and there are two things in life that I would never say no to in terms of bigger sizes and a TV or display is one of them. Now. As you can see from the picture, hopefully, there is a lot of light in this room, so there might be glare on screen. But to me, the picture just looks so beautiful, so sweet. The color accuracy is just like hitting my eyes and I'm just really reveling in it. It's a 55-inch screen. And another advantage that it will have over other, say, 31-inch post-production monitor that is out on the market is that when I reviewed the Sony HX310 last month, I noted that the viewing angle obviously is not as good as the X300 reference class RGB OLED monitor. But still, I was slightly disappointed in that, you know, once I actually shift my head maybe beyond 15 degrees off center, then the colors would shift and it defeats the entire purpose of actually achieving higher color fidelity. And Panasonic has recognized this issue and they have implemented their own technological solution to try and minimize the parallax effect between the two LCD layers so that they can actually achieve a wider viewing angle without that much loss in color fidelity. Now, as a primer for those of you who don't understand dual LCD technology, the premise is this. You have basically an LCD with a backlight and on a conventional LCD, you will have a display cell layer with all the color filters RGB. But on a dual LCD monitor or television, you will add an additional light modulating cell layer in between the display cell and also the backlight. And this light modulating cell layer will be acting as a shutter to actually switch off the pixel on a per pixel basis so that it can allow for pixel level light control, mimicking all that. So when we saw the HSX310 and certainly when we see this 55 inch prototype from Panasonic, I should stop calling it that because you know clearly there's a name here and it's called Megacon which stands for Mega Contrast. But you know, the first thing that popped into my mind when you say Megacon is Megatron and you know, to the theme tune of like Transformers and robots in disguise and stuff, you know, it like came into my head. But rather than saying that this will transform into a robot, I would say that Dual LCD is transformative. You know, it gives you not only almost OLED light blacks because of the per pixel control. On top of that, you also get brightness as well. You get a full field brightness of 1000 nits on this display. You have to see it to appreciate the impact, the HDR impact that can be generated from 1000 nits full field without any restriction in ABL. It just makes scenes look more realistic. And I need to mention that the DCI-P3 color gamut coverage is 99% and the underlying monochrome light modulating cell layer would be Full HD or 1080p in resolution, but the outer display cell layer 
is true 4K in resolution, 4096 times 2160. The chassis is quite thick as well because obviously there are two LCDs and because the transmittance is probably going to be 5% or even lower, then you have to have a more powerful backlight with more cooling, with more power consumption to try and drive this TVs to 1000 nits, so it's fairly thick, but I think in a studio, I mean, let's face it, they've been using Dolby Pulsar with water cooling and stuff, so I don't think this will be a problem. But this product currently is a prototype. It is pitched towards the Hollywood studios and also the post-production community, and I don't believe that it will be cheap, because if you can imagine that the 31-inch Sony HX310 will cost you around £35,000. I believe that a corresponding increase in screen size and also the implementation of a wider viewing angle that I believe is not an effect of viewing angle composition film because one of my colleagues managed to take a subpixel structure of this TV. It is IPS, by the way. They don't have the sort of blurriness that you see on, say, Samsung Q90R or the Samsung Q950R. So, I think you know it will be expensive. It will be north of probably fifty thousand. But we certainly hope that this technology can slowly trickle down into the domestic environment. And I think the Hollywood community, to them, I think you know, what's fifty thousand pounds? Let's be honest here it will not be a problem and they have been craving for a larger screen and without any automatic brightness limiter restriction, without any burn-in worries to be used as color grading monitors and I believe that Panasonic may have come up with a solution. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.